Hello and welcome to another Leica review. Today we are looking at the Leica 18mm Super Elmar F 3.8. Now if you know anything about this lens you probably know that it's one of the best prime lenses that Leica produces for wide angle photography. And in fact if you look at the range of lenses that are available there is a trial mark which is 16, 18, 21 and there is this 18mm and above that there is only 21. Leica does not produce 14 or 15 millimeter lenses. So this lens in particular is great for wide angle photography. So that means if you're gonna take out this lens and use it on the field, what you will probably be doing is photographing landscape, or you could do photography of, for example, urban spaces, uh, uh, architectural photography. This is a lens that is an incredibly accurate lens. It has very little distortion and it has very accurate colors. Now, if you look at the price range, this is rather high compared to any other lenses in the market, but this is particularly made for the Leica M. So what that means is a manual focus lens that you can use when you go out to photograph. So if you are, for example, in Venice, Rome, or some of the European cities that has beautiful architecture, this is the lens that's gonna give you those beautiful results. Now, I'm going to demonstrate how this lens performs with actual photographs I've taken on in Montreal. And what you will see is I have taken these photographs of these uh, modern buildings with very straight lines, and you can actually see how the lines are not distorted, how the edges are very clear. There is almost no vignetting. Now, that is because, first of all, this lens is f3.8. If you consider all the lenses that are in the market, this is considered very slow. But that is okay because what you have is a lens that is going to perform uh, exceptionally well when you are going to take those photographs. And when the designers or the engineers of this lens were thinking about it, they were probably thinking, okay, this person who's going to use this lens is going to use it, for, for example, in daytime and is going to have available light that is going to illuminate the space or the, uh, the landscape that he's going to be photographing. So if you're going to do nighttime photography, this is probably not the best lens to have. But you can use a tripod and you can have long exposures that will give you a pretty good view and pretty good results. But if you are going to use this lens for anything at night, I would seriously recommend that you at least have a tripod to use it. Now, for those who are going to be using this lens uh, at f3.8, the results are exceptionally well. So there's little distortion because it's, as you know, if you move up the, the ranks of like, it's not f2.8, it's not f3.4, it's f3.8 close to f4. So what it's saying is that it's eliminating all those problems that are often associated with vignetting or distortion at a wider apertures. So the results are very good. The best sweet spot on this lens I have found is f5.6 and f F8, those are the points where you will get the best results. And if you are gonna use daytime without any filters, uh, setting your ISO level to the lowest level, let's say F, uh, at an ISO of 160, or, uh, for example, that is going to give you great results because you can dial up your, uh, your aperture to F8 or F11, and you're gonna have very sharp, crisp images. Uh, also, you don't have to worry about this lens uh, having been yetting or distortion because what has happened is Leica M, the latest Leica M10, for example, or the M240, already has baked in uh, uh, correction. So what happens is when you take a photograph, the, the software within the, the camera automatically corrects for vignetting and distortion. Sometimes we do like to have the distortion, sometimes we like to have the vignetting. So this is not an option that you can delete, but if you, let's say, take your photographs and you wanna put some vignetting or you wanna create some effects, well, you can take it to, uh, to your Lightroom and the Lightroom, you can add those effects or you can vice versa, remove those effects if you had them. Now, for those who are wondering what this lens is going to do, well, first of all, let's look at its design. It has nine aperture blades. What that means is if you're looking at, the, at this lens and, and, and you want to get those circular bouquets, nine aperture blades is going to give you a pretty good result. So 
in that respect, it's a well-designed lens. And then if you look at the interior, the, the design, there is eight elements and seven groups. So what it does that tell you? It tells you that it's a complex lens, uh, removing much of the distortion, getting you great results. So from a technical point of view, you're paying for a great lens that is well-designed. Of course, the price range, as I said, is a lot higher than what other competitors have for their lineup of cameras. But we're not comparing Fujis or Canons and Nikons. We're just looking at what is available for Leica. Now, there are, of course, there are other wide-angle lenses that are produced, for example, from Voigtlander or from Zeiss. But as a lens, this is probably the best lens you can get from Leica for as an 18 millimeter. Now, I have also done reviews on the 15mm size, which is also a wide-angle lens, and also the Vo uh, Voigtlander lenses. And you can see those reviews on our website, likereview.com. But for this lens specifically, I personally like this lens as much as my trial mar. So if I'm not going to be carrying my trial mar, this is the lens that I'll take, because what it, hap what it has is it gives me that compactness, it gives me that lightweight, and it gives me the ability to take the lens anywhere without having to be weighed down by a heavier lens. Now, the 16, 18, 21 millimeter trial mark is a little bit heavier. So if you are going to use that lens, it's going to be a little bit heavier in terms of like if you're traveling all day. But for me, that little bit of difference is not all that important. What is important is if, if it's going to fit, fit your purposes. So if you are changing spaces, and you, for example, want to go from 16 to 21, Triamar will give you that. But if you are just going to do a single space, for example, if you're just going to do landscape of, for example, setting sun or, or mountains and all that stuff, 18 millimeter just works just perfect. And perfect in terms of the way that distortion is very minimal. Now, as compared to the other lenses that were produced by Leica, there is, of course, the Leica R series, the other lenses. And this lens, in those respects, is a, a much better, much modern lens. Uh, of course, you could buy cheaper lenses in the I R series with an adapter. But if you're looking for that crisp, sharp image, this is the lens to get. So let's look at the images that we have now and compare those images to uh, to other images that I've taken and see how those uh, images are going to speak of this lens's performance. The first image we're going to be looking at is this tall skyscraper. It's a, it's a big building. And notice how this, this building is very, very beautiful in terms of modern architecture. And if you're taking with a lens that is wide angle, what will happen is you'll see the lines kind of curve or we distorted at the edges. And in this example, the, the, the image is not distorted. In fact, it gives you great results. Now, if you notice also, I took some of those photographs and turned them to black and white to give you the, the how it will appear if you are doing monochrome photography. And also, if you look at the sideways, the second image that you're going to look at is in color. And the lines are, again, very straight, very nice. And the corners are very beautiful. There is an almost uh, no noticeable vignetting, which is what I do like. Uh, the, the next image is an image that I took of a different angle. And to show you how uh, lines from a side traveling one corner to the other would perform. Again, here they are very straight. And then we have an older building, which we are looking at right now. This is a beautiful residential building that is in Montreal. And as you can see, the, there is almost no distortion. Of course, this is not a tilt-shift lens, so you're going to have the, the buildings tilting backwards because of the wide angle and because of the way it is designed. But overall, it is a great performer. And of course, when you look at the, this other one that is a Cartier building, and you're going to see that each line, each uh, uh, perpendicular line going up towards the sky is beautifully rendered. And for me, this is what I look for in a lens. If it can perform without distortion, if the vignetting is not there, and if the corrections are accurately depicting what I'm seeing with my own eyes, that is what I'm looking for. And again, the Sterling Life building here is also very nice. And we can see that each of these images reflect the characteristics of this lens. And also notice that it is rendering 
the colors in a very accurate way. These are gray buildings, these are beige buildings, that these buildings have almost no color tonations except very muted colors. So those muted colors are well reflected. And this is something that uh, if you are looking for accuracy in a, in a, in a, in a, in a lens, this is what you will find. Now, Roche Bavar is a very special uh, building. Uh, it's got some uh, uh, red on it and that again, the bottom of the image and the top of the image is very different because of course the light is much reduced at the bottom and the top of course has got the sky. So we have to kind of balance this photograph and what we are having is this gradation of tonalities that are going from dark to light and that's something very nice. Of course, uh, when you look at this lens, you're going to find out that uh, it's a very compact lens, very easy to use, and you can take it with you anywhere. Uh, for those who are interested in learning more about this lens, I am actually doing a workshop on wide-angle photography. You can check out our website at likereview.com to find out about this workshop because landscape photography is a, an area where a lot of people need a lot of improvement on and this is one of the lenses that I particularly show how I use it in the field. Also, if you are interested in learning about the other wide-angle lenses, there are many, many reviews on the website, and if you are interested in buying this lens, of course, there are links at the bottom of the article and also on the website. Please do follow them, and of course, if you subscribe to our uh, newsletter, I'll be able to send you more information as these articles become available. And I hope that you have enjoyed this review, and I look forward to seeing you in our next review. Thank you for watching.